So after discussing the D1, D9 and D10, we are with the Sastiyamsa here. D60 chart, which is the chart of your Atma. It shows where your heart is, no, where your soul is. <laughs> the D60 changes very quickly, so you need an exact bot time for this. Okay, it changes very, very, very fast. But if you don't have an accurate bot time, you can use this to verify and rectify your birth time. All right, so I recommend going for a birth time rectification unless your father or some relative tells you I was exactly noting this down very well when you were born. All right. Now, if you have Atma Karak in the first house of your Sastiyamsha chart, it means this lifetime, in this lifetime, you, you your job is to find yourself. So, the Sastiyamsha cho shows your uh, your objective in this lifetime. What what are you doing at a soul level? The D1 shows, you know, externally what things will happen. The D9 shows how your mind works. The D10 shows what you want to do in your career. But the D60 shows what you want to do at a soul level. So, for example, if uh, your Atma uh, Karak is in the first house of your D60, then your job is to find yourself. You kind of you may feel lost sometimes, okay? Because you may feel that I don't know myself. I don't know what to do in life. So your job is to figure out who you are. Self-discovery is the most important thing for you. So focus on trying to find out who are you, what you want to do in life, what you don't want to do in life, okay? So it's very important that you try to use this life to find your purpose. If you don't, then maybe next life, again, you are born with Atma Karak in the first house of the D60 chart, right? Now, if Atma Karak is in the second house of your D60 chart, you, you, you will have to find value. You will have to find meaningful things in life. So, this is a very difficult placement. Can be, not is, can be. I'll tell you why. Because... Suppose you are D1, D9, D10, everything is excellent. And then you have uh, Atma Kark in second house in the Sastiyamsha. And if it is badly placed, debilitated, afflicted. So what can happen is, you have everything in life, but you don't feel you belong. So you don't belong to your family, you don't belong to your marriage, you don't belong in your job, you know, you don't belong in this world. So if you have this placement, you should try to figure out what is that you identify more strongly with. Most strongest identification has to be found. What is that which gives you meaning in life? Okay, Just existing or finding yourself is not enough. You need to identify what makes this life worth living. So the challenge for you would be don't just exist, also live. Okay, so... For now, you may feel you are just existing, okay, just doing all the daily things and you don't, you don't live. So then now, <coughs> try to live also, okay. Now, if your Atma Karak is in the third house of your Sastiyamsha chart, then it means you will have to master the courage to be yourself. You haven't mastered it yet, <coughs> which means you might get bullied why? Because when somebody bullies you, what happens? They tell, hey, what are you doing? You know, you, you rascal, you idiot, you know, why are you doing it? Do that. So, Atma Karak in third house of your D60, you, you will most likely get bullied. Or you may try to bully others. So, therefore, when somebody bullies you, it is a great period for you to show courage and and tell that person, hey, Mr. or Mrs. or Miss, <laughs> I won't do what you are saying. Because this is what I think is right. Provided that is sanctioned by the scriptures, not that you say, oh, I'll take dance, you know, this is my way. Okay. So, you have to understand that you have to go deep down inside and master the courage to be yourself. For you, the objective should be, if not now, then never. Because if you don't, then this will perpetually go on and it will continue for many, many lifetimes. Okay. So therefore, 
try your best to find yourself to master the courage to be yourself okay now atma karak in the fourth house of your sasti amsha chart this is another difficult placement this is very similar to the second house so the second house i said to you you may lack belonging if your atma karak is in the fourth house you may lack peace now it does not mean you literally you know not be peaceful you will always be unhappy no it does not mean that it might mean that at midst of having everything career the name fame power position money marriage everything you forgot that what matters at the end is stability now of course the growth is important but for you atma garden for if you feel that you have kind of you know lost grip of your life do you feel it <laughs> if you feel this then you need to aim for stability you have to step back you have to be on the back foot i know i know you don't like to hear this atma karak in fourth oh my god i want to rule the world you know was that alexander the great i think he said you know the world is not enough that's your mentality but that's fine it's not wrong to go and conquer the world but what is certainly problematic is not having stability so try to build a base and on top of that you go and conquer the world because wherever the atma karak is your atma is looking for that what does it mean it means you may not have that so you may not have mental peace okay but if you work hard for your mental please do meditation do spiritual practices center yourself do mantras seek association of a spiritual community in a spiritual community and then you will be able to you will be able to understand yourself and please try to get married if possible and have a stable marriage this is very important for you specially okay but again it will depend on your d1 d9 if the marriage will happen it if it will go good or bad you know so you cannot control that but try your best especially for fourth house i am telling this okay marriage is important always you are a monk of course under the guidance of a guru and other god brothers okay now atma karak in the fifth house this is a very interesting placement no this shows that you are born in this life to express yourself creatively but at the same time it shows you are also discovering your creativity because you have taken birth in this life to discover what makes you happy creatively now you may think oh does it mean you know i have to become a you no know, comedian or a chef or a singer dancer no absolutely not you can be in any profession you can be married you can be a monk whoever doesn't matter but what is certainly important is that you try to understand the meaning behind things in life fifth house atma karak in d16 you need to find meaning why are you doing this what is what is your goal so whenever you are doing something suppose you want to get married to somebody you have to ask this question to yourself why am i getting married to this person is it because of this person's beauty is it because of this person's intelligence or you know because this person is very wealthy or whatever so if your purpose behind doing anything in life is not the best then you will suffer you will suffer very badly okay so therefore atma karak in fifth in d60 if please have the right motivations otherwise your life will be destroyed okay because if you have wrong motivations and you do something with this placement you will keep looking for it always so this will be a situation where suppose you get married to somebody you you feel oh this person is very charming okay and that person is impressed by you or you try hard to impress that person and you or you seduce that person <laughs> to get married to you so that's not the best motivation that is that i mean that should not be the only motivation okay so then what will happen your marriage will not work you will feel like you know marrying somebody else seducing somebody else or getting seduced by somebody else all right so 
have the right motivations only then you will be happy okay now atma garak in the sixth house of shasti amsha chart this lifetime is payback time <laughs> i'm sorry i do not have good words for you for this placement now what does it mean payback does it mean you know you will only lose in life you will never be happy no not like that if your atma garak is in the sixth house of your shasti amsha chart then things and traits related to that planet you have to pay back to somebody you know so suppose mercury is your atma karak and he is in the sixth house so you have to pay money and and, and in d1 if it associate if mercury associates with the eighth house it is like i can write and sign in a paper and give it to you you have to pay money somebody will come and you know put some court case against you even if you are not having any fault and you know the court will say yes pay a million dollars <laughs> why because the sixth house in shasti amsha shows your rain that rain you have to pay and especially if the atma garak is involved <laughs> that has to be paid back in this very lifetime and if you don't pay it back suppose suppose something happens and you run away suppose you take a loan and you run away then again next lifetime the same planet will be there same thing you have to do again okay very 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 important don't run away whatever is there chuck it complete it finish it off and get rid of it or else you will be in a nightmare okay in your next life again because in the next life you have to pay interest okay so and you know karma's interest it's more than the the personal rate of interest uh, for personal loan for any country okay so it's much more than that it's interest upon interest that's how karma works okay so don't delay it pay the price and get rid of it that does does not mean you have to tolerate injustice and you know you just get bullied it does not mean that but if there is a situation where it's like a where you have tried everything and it doesn't work then uh, better pay it and just leave okay that's that's recommended provided you take all precautions now atma karak is in your 7th house even <clears throat> 7th house of marriage what does this mean should you get married should you not get married well this certainly means you now this could take you to extremes either you may be too much obsessed about marriage or you may have no interest in marriage but this does not mean that you must get married or you should never get married okay this means in this lifetime you have some lessons to be learned through marriage so either it is by getting married or by abstaining okay so if your lagna chart and navamsha is not positive then you may not get married in general irrespective of what is there in the d60 but suppose it is uh, if your d1 and d6 uh, d9 is good or marriage and your dashas are positive then you get married then you will learn incredible lessons about whom about yourself not your spouse okay so your spouse is the one who will uh, <laughs> will teach you lessons could be good or bad that depends but if you don't get married with this placement then make sure you are living as a monk otherwise it's recommended you get married and learn the lessons because without that your soul will not fructify to the maximum extent you will not mature without marrying okay but again as i said it depends on your d1 if you will get married or not okay that also should be there in your destiny Oof, that's a complicated situation. Now, Atma Karak in the eighth house of your Sasti Amsha chart. What does this mean? This means you are you are trying to find what what is life all about. What is life? I mean, what what am I doing? 
why am I here? So you are doing self-discovery. But, so this is similar to the placement of the Atma card in the first house. The first house also shows that. But there is a difference. But with this eighth house, you may perpetually feel lost. So you may feel that, oh, I am... I am trying my best to find myself, but why am I not finding myself? Because you are in the house of Andhakar. It's it's darkness. How can you find yourself? So how do you find yourself? The ninth house, go to a guru and the guru will help you find yourself. So for this placement, if you don't go to a spiritual community, you you I mean I'm using very strong words, but you are doomed. You you have no future. Maybe this is the first time in the last 7-8 years I am saying this. If you don't do spiritual practices, you are doomed. I mean, nobody can protect you because your soul is lost. So if you feel lost, please, there is no compromise. You have to take shelter of a guru. So check your city, go to a spiritual community nearby. You may need 5 years, 10 years, 100 years, 100 lifetimes to find out to meet your guru, that's not important. But important is you show your sincerity to God. Otherwise, uh, you will perpetuate this cycle. Okay. Now, Atma Karag in the ninth house of your Sastiyamsa chart. What does this mean? The ninth house is the house of, you know, your guru, father, enlightenment, spiritual progress and all this. So this shows that you you are considerably aware of spirituality. So, your job in this life is to not lose it. So, if you have this placement in the ninth and you have some spiritual inclinations, then please further it. Because if you lose it, then you will go to the eighth house and eighth house is you are lost. I know you may have this in the ninth, but you have not heard what I said for the eighth. So, maybe you can... They play, you know, like one or two minutes. You will hear. It's very daunting. So, Atma Bharag in 9th house in D60, your job is almost done. 80-90%. Don't lose it. So, your mantra is don't lose it. Don't screw it up. Don't screw your relationship with your guru and your god, god brothers. If you do that, you're finished. And if you don't, just stay in the boat. You don't have to do much, you know, and you will cross, okay? So, this is a brilliant placement, actually. Now, Atmakarak in the 10th house, Dasham Bhav. What is 10th house? 10th house shows your purpose, your vision in life. So, what does it mean? You have a vision or you don't have a vision. What is it? So, it, so this placement means you are, you are searching for something more than yourself. What you can do for society. So, your your mantra should be how not to be selfish. If, if, you, if you become selfish, that's the end for you. So your mantra should be, so suppose I have a skill, uh, let me monetize it, let me give it to others. Give it to everybody else. You can take money in return or you can become famous, that's fine. But with this, you cannot just stay with yourself. You have to interact with others. You have to give things to others. Be of some service to others. Only then this will help you. You can do charity. You can, you know, do seva. All this. Very important, okay? Give yourself to others. Be of some help, all right? Now, Atmakarak in the 11 of your D60 chart. Do you have a lot of desires or your desires are almost fulfilled? What does it mean? Well, that depends on the chart. But 11th house is the house of fulfillment of desire. Or it shows completion. You may be obsessed with completing things. You may be a perfectionist. You may always feel, ah, should I start this? Should I not start this? You know, maybe uh, I will not be very good or maybe I will not be very good. So, if you have these thoughts, then you need to give it up. Because your vision may be so grand that you don't even take action. So for you, the mantra is, please take action. Act on your desires. Okay, it does not mean your desires will be fulfilled. 
if you have atma ka okay but your desires are like i won't say big but you you have such a weird conception about yourself and you feel oh if i do this this will not work that will not work ye nahi chalega wo nahi chalega i am not good at this so either you are good or bad start it okay very important if you don't start you will be stuck and last but not the least atmagarak in the 12th house of your sastiyamsha chart you are done with life <laughs> does it mean you will get moksha well certainly not maybe but this is a this is a position which will which will teach you which will tell you which will or other let me say you know force you to cultivate detachment so this is a very difficult placement you know why because you you may not have detachment with this so this can show that your soul in the previous lifetimes had been so frustrated that now you are wanting to detach things but it's not easy to detach because there is this you know bhoga tyaga this pendulum bhog tyag bhog tyag so you may be oscillating bhog tyag bhog tyag bhog tyag bhog tyag so if you are enjoying too much you know like too much sexuality too much money and all this it can be very problematic for you so for you the mantra is please balance your life don't overly detach yourself prematurely and don't overly enjoy okay so maintain a balance and you don't have to go into extremes and try to be detached to whatever extent possible all right thank you so much everybody please subscribe to the channel if you are new and don't forget to visit my website for personalized consultations jai sri ram